Hey everyone, today we're going to be tying the Pat's rubber legs. This is a fly you absolutely need to have in your box. Not only is it a great stonefly imitation, it's quick to tie and it barely uses any materials. Let's go. Okay, if you don't know me yet, my name is Matt. I'm the manager of the Northern Angler here in Traverse City, Michigan. We're a small, independent fly shop trying to get you comfortable and confident at the vise and on the water. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. That lets you know whenever there's a new video. And if any of this is helpful for you, hit that thumbs up. It's a big help for us. The Pats has gotten very popular the past few years as Euronymphing has really grown in the United States. Let's go ahead and talk about the specific materials we'll be using for today's fly. The hook is a Daiichi 1730. This is a bent shank nymph hook, great for stone flies. It comes in a bunch of sizes, but a size 6 is what we'll be using today. To weight it down, we're going to add a 3 16 tungsten bead up front, and keep it in place with some lead wire wraps. When we add this much weight to the front, this fly actually fishes mostly inverted, a lot like a jig hook. For our thread, we'll start with Viva 6 Ot up front. This way we won't build up too much bulk when tying in those antenna in front of the bead. On the back side, we're going to use that Viva 140, just a reliable, thick thread. For the body, we're going to be using Stonefly Chenille in black and brown. There's tons of great colors in this material, and it's nice and thin, so you can create an easy, tapered body. Our legs are going to be medium, barred, sexy floss in black and brown. This is the preferred legging material for this fly because it's not as flimsy as silicone and lasts much longer than standard rubber. Don't forget, as always, the full material list is linked down below in the description. Let's start by putting our hook in the vise securely Always make sure your hook is secure. You do not want one of these flying back at you. I'm going to start with 6 ot Vivas right at the eye. I'm going to do about five or six turns. I'm really trying to minimize how much thread I'm building up here at the front as we attach the antenna. I'm going to grab one of these barred sexy floss legs from Montana Fly Company. I'm going to wrap it around the back side so that the ends are roughly even. Bring this up. I'm tensioning this with my left hand here, and I'm gonna do one full wrap. And as I tension this near side, the one that's coming down towards the eye, I'm gonna wrap down back towards the eye. Adding tension helps me really get a nice, flat, low profile wrap on there. I'm gonna switch hands. So I'm gonna grab the other leg with my right hand, my bobbin with my left, and we're just going to switch jobs and we're going to do the same thing two three wraps i'm going to pull these up and wrap right around the eye grab my whip finish here and i'm just going to do one two three quick whip finish wraps bring that tight and trim your thread off this should allow us to seat our bead really really close and sometimes if you're getting if you get good at this the bead will slide right over the thread wraps themselves. Now, I'm going to use a little bit of UV epoxy here. Normally, I would just hit this with super glue, but my super glue bottle is currently sealed shut and it's time to buy a new one. So, we're going to go the UV route. Hit this with a light. With these powerful lights today, it does not take long at all. There we go. Slide that forward. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of lead wire. This is 0 0.025. I'm doing about eight wraps with this. I'm going to pinch it off with my thumbnail on the front, rotate it, pinch it off with my thumbnail in the back, and slide it right on up into the bead. I'm going to switch my thread now to a Vivas 140 in black. I'm going to start right at the wire trim off any excess. I'm going to build up a little thread dam here. This is just going to wedge 
that wire up against the front of the bead and prevent this big step we find when we wrap lead and then it jumps down to the, your hook shank here. It doesn't make well if you're wrapping materials up the shank of the hook. So this is going to make materials play nicer for us. Okay, I'm going to work back to the point of this hook. So see how my, my thread here intersects and hits that point? That's right where I want to be. I'm going to grab another sexy floss leg, just another one. I'm going to do that same technique where I'm folding it around the back side, trying to get those tips to line up here, just like that. Tensioning it with the left hand, wrapping up with the right, do a full wrap, and keep your thread tension here. If you let it go, yeah, your leg's probably going to fly off. But if you keep your thread tension, like I'm doing here, it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to tension this with my left hand, and I'm going to wrap back to where the barb is. This doesn't have a barb currently because I pinched them down to get these big beads on these hooks. Switch sides, bring it back again. And you should have a nice splayed tail, which it looks great, kind of that forked tail. That's going to give you more action in the water and look just a little bit more realistic. I'm just going to quickly fill this gap in the center of this, just again, so there's not any big discrepancies when I'm wrapping my material forward. These are designed to be really quick ties, so do not spend too much time making this underbody look perfect. Don't worry about a taper. We want it to be nice and thin, but I can't leave a bare shank on there. So next thing we're gonna grab some of this stonefly chenille. This is great stuff from Hairline and the guys at Fly Fish Food. Really thin, so you can produce a very thin Pat's rubber legs that's gonna cut through that water column. Trick here is expose the core. So I'm just using my thumbnail and fingernail and pinching and pulling, and that's going to expose the core. That's what I want to tie down here. Slide back. Once that's tied in, I'm going to work my thread right up to what I call the shoulder. It's that joint where the hook begins its bend. I'm going to do two half hitches. That's going to keep my thread right in the spot I want it. Wind up the rest on the bobbin, bring in your cradle, and we're going to utilize the rotary function on our Renzetti Traveler here as I work my way up the shank. Just touching wraps doesn't have to be anything crazy here. Once you get there, move your cradle, grab your bobbin. I'm going to do one and two wraps. Do not trim your chenille here. This stays put. I'm putting mine in the material clip. You probably can't see it. It's off frame, but that's just going to keep it out of the way as I work with my next set of legs. If you have to tie it in again, no big deal, but it's going to eat up some time. And again, these are designed to be tied very quickly. I'm going to grab another barred sexy floss leg. This time I'm going to form a loop and I'm going to trim it. Set one piece down. Again, I'm going with the fold technique. There's a recurring theme here. Do two wraps, one on the near side towards me, one on the far side. This is just going to give our stonefly some legs. I'm going to come in with my left hand, thumb and index, fold these back, and wrap forward up to the bead. Here, we're going to go with two more half hitches. This just, again, keeps our thread in place and makes for a nice durable fly. These get bounced off rocks all the time. They're fish near the bottom. Why wouldn't you want a durable fly? Grab our chenille out of that material holder, and I'm just going to slowly work my way around these legs. Don't get frustrated. I know it can be frustrating catching those legs, but take your time. Having a rotary vise is a really, really nice tool to have when you're working with this material. Okay, I'm all the way up at the bead now. I'm just going to work 
some wraps on there. Usually two, three wraps is pretty good. I'm going to reach in with my scissors. Trim that off. Grab your whip finish tool now. This is an extended whip finish tool, so it's a little bit bigger, and I can fit it around those legs a little bit easier. But I'm going to hold the bobbin in my left hand in my ring and pinky finger. This gives me the ability to manipulate materials with my thumb and index when I'm whip, fin whip finishing with my right hand. Three there. I'm going to do three more. Tension that down, come in with your scissors, trim it. All right, now we have to do the toughest part, I think, is trimming your legs to the right length. I usually shoot for shank length being behind the bead to right where the chenille is for the front and the back. If you want, you can also fold them back. This is a great way to do this, is fold it back, hold it there, trim it. Okay, fold it forward. Got your spot, trim it. Okay, the front's ended up a little bit longer than I wanted, but that's okay. We have a starting point, that's great. Now, some guys will leave these middle legs long, more action, more fun, more fish sometimes, they think, but I'm gonna trim mine down just a teeny bit, just so they're a little bit more to scale. The big tip with trimming your legs is less is more, a little bit at a time, okay? All right, last thing, we're gonna add a little bit more of this UV resin to our thread wraps where we tied this thing off. Again, if you wanna use head cement, you wanna use, you know, something crazy, you got airplane glue or some industrial stuff I don't even know about yet, go for it. But make a durable fly, you will not regret it. Hit this light. Give it some rotations. There we go. All right, that's the Pat's Rubber Legs. I hope you get a chance to tie this and fish it. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Of course, if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. You don't wanna miss any of the new videos coming out. And if you like this, hit the thumbs up. That's a huge help for us. As always, I hope to see you soon in the shop or out on the water.